Welcome to this video about using CERTES to query non-traditional data stored in Hadoop. I'm Cynthia Sirocco from IBM. As you might imagine, one of the challenges of working with big data is that it's not all represented in one format. Furthermore, many popular data formats include structures that vary from one file to the next, and some of these may have deeply nested and complex structures. Yet the ability to query a wide range of data, including non-traditional forms of data, remains a common demand. There's a strong market bias towards using SQL to fulfill this demand because it's a proven technology based on an ANSI ISO standard. In addition, a lot of programmers already know SQL, and firms prefer to leverage skills that are readily available. But SQL was originally developed to allow programmers to easily access data modeled in simple rows and columns of tables. So how can it cope with a wide range of data formats and structures? Well, one solution involves the use of a CERTI, which is short for serializer and deserializer. Simply put, a CERTI maps records in HDFS files to rows in Hive tables and vice versa. Doing so allows, allows Hive to support custom and sometimes complex data formats. CERTIs are popular in the Hadoop community. If you search online for CERTIs, you'll find a variety available publicly for various data formats, including CSV files, JSON, XML, Parquet, and other forms of data. Indeed, Hive ships with a collection of CERTIs, and programmers can always write their own if they need to. It's not hard to use a CERTI once you find or develop one that suits your needs. Usually, you just have to issue some command or follow some simple steps to make the JAR file available to your SQL processing engine. Let's walk through an example of working with a CERTI. Here's an example of some data from social media sites about a topic of interest to me. It happened to be IBM Watson. The application that I used to collect this data returned the results as a JSON array, and I stored the data in files on HDFS. What you see here is a subset from one of those files. And as you can see, it's not very easy for a human to read or analyze. So I created a SQL table for this JSON data. First, I located a publicly available JSON CERTI that I thought would satisfy my needs, and I made that JAR file available to my SQL engine, which was IBM's Big SQL. Then I created an externally managed table that pointed to the HDFS directory containing my social media JSON data. You'll see that in the location clause at the bottom of this example. But what I really want you to focus on is the area in blue. The row format clause references the class in my CERTI jar file that Big SQL will use to serialize and deserialize the data. Now let's see what happens when I want to query this table. Look at the simple select statement at the top of the page. It's just like any other select you might write. I didn't reference the CERTI anywhere, and I didn't do anything special. The underlying data format isn't something that I have to be bothered with in my query, and that's kind of the point. The result from my query is presented in a tabular structure, just like any other SQL query result set. In this particular example, I used a CERTI that only accessed one level of the data's nested structure, so some columns, like the author info and feed info columns in this example, contain JSON structures within them. That was okay for my purposes, but if I wanted to dig deeper, I could have done that with a different JSON CERTI and a different table definition. If you want to learn more, I've given you some links that can help, including a couple of links to materials that explore how you can query more complex JSON structures. Thanks for watching.